A warm welcome. This is a recording device. It's not a mic. A warm welcome to everyone. Uh, this is the first of the sessions where we are hoping to record people who have spent some time in the village, who know the village very well. And we are really privileged to have with us uh, Dr. Selsa Pinto, who is a very prominent historian at, 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 at a much wider level, at a Goa level, at an Indo-Portuguese history level, at the level of uh, colonial history across the world. Dr. Nandakumar Kamat rates her very highly. Idalin, come please. Rates her very highly and says that she's one of the foremost authorities of Indo-Portuguese history this side of the Swiss. No, Dr. Pinto does not accept this compliment and says that it's a bit of an exaggeration, I know. But uh, if you look at all the work that is produced, especially in our parts of the world, Dr. Selsa has really contributed a lot to it. Uh, she was, she, she will tell you her own story. But in some and substance, it is this. In the 1960s, she moved from Karachi to Goa. There is a strong Goan community. There was a strong Goan community. There are some in Karachi. And uh, they went there before. Uh, Miss Shirley, please come in front. Come in front. We are, we, we, come, both of you all come. We are asking both of you all to come. <laughs> so we'll have to drag you all. So the Karachi Goan community was, uh, had gone there before partition. It had nothing to do with partition and things like that. And they were there for economic reasons when it was part of British India. And then after partition, they kind of got marooned. After 61, some of them did come back. Some of them have moved out to other areas. So Dr. Selsa will tell you how she reached Saligao and how she spent the years here and what they meant to her and what are the memories she has of those times. We want to also start this off as a small kind of oral history recording. You know, where people capture their knowledge because all of us are sitting with so many important memories. And before we finish our innings here, we need to record and keep it for, for other generations. Now I'm saying uh, Mr. Bijan Shah is there who is a techie who has worked with so many fields and so many young people. And uh, that story needs to be told of free technology, open source. Ms. Shirley has taught a generation of uh, students in the school. She's one of our fav uh, fav uh, favorite teachers. Everyone remembers her and how she planted the love of science in the young student's mind. No, but this is not recognized. So I think these small stories are important. And there are so many of us who, who have done our own things. Um, Jerson, who is a caretaker of the club, he has worked as a postman. He has many stories to tell, I'm sure. So everyone's story is important in their own way. Without taking much time, without wasting, coming between you all and the speaker, I'll hand you over to Dr. Selsa. Don't press any buttons, doctor. That's all. You'll be fine. So you can you can start very informally. Keep your story going. The Sal tree, Saldana, Salmona, all starting with Sal, connected with the this village Saligao. I lived here for three years, from uh, June 1965 to May 1968. It has been a carry on, carry on. one of my, the brightest phases in my life. Let me explain to you why. I was born and half raised in Karachi. Born in 1951, and then my mother decided to leave and come to Goa. Most of our friends opted for Canada, America, Africa, UK, but my mother opted for Goa. As a preliminary, both of us, mother and daughter, came to Goa in May 1962. That is just six months after liberation. We were here for two months in Goa just to take note of 
how it would be for us if we would return after a wonderful a vacation of 2 months here in goa we returned but i was at that point of time a 11 year old child and then finally when we left karachi i was a 13 year old and as a 13 year old teenager you know what it means to be uprooted what it means to lose your friends what it means to move from a city from one city to another city or from one city to another village highly traumatic and a culture shock it was to me goa from a city where we had electricity we had uh, uh, we didn't have pig toilets we had piped gas in karachi we don't still have it in goa we we use we never use firewood suddenly when we returned see on the 13th of january 1965 was a day we arrived in goa not a black day but at that point of time it was a black day for me we went to our ancestral house in arpara today arpara is extremely noisy but at that time it was a sleepy village huge sprawling house up and down where we had to move about with lamps and there were these chimney lamps or aladdin lamps kept at different parts pig toilets firewood and so forth very traumatic for a child 3 months there in arpara my mother decided to concentrate on the school that i should join you she she had certain ideas in her mind i do not know how and why once was the karachi connection the sisters of missionary sisters of the franciscan missionary sisters of christ the king they had their school in karachi in fact the school was founded in karachi itself sister bridget all of you know her from saligaon founded it so my mother's first thought was a karachi this was one karachi connection second is cincinnati town in karachi a township created by a salgaonkar a goan salgaonkar cincinnati sabrio that means that such great people must be there in saligaon that was her next uh, point of thinking third she said and i will never ever forget this saligaon is known for foxes so i would like you to be a, a little bit of foxy in your life <laughs> i was not exactly cunning and sly but definitely i got the practic practicality from this place so she she was influenced by the, and there was another thing there was still another thing my father in his childhood with his parents lived in arari for years together and my father studied in mother de the one of the oldest schools of goa so this was still another 
with that all right she was the boss and really she was the boss of the house not my father with that i we came to saligaon certain things of our our para remained the pig toilets no electricity firewood but slowly and gradually things things changed personally for me and what were they now first and foremost the locality i lived in i we lived it in two different houses in this 3 year old period and today dr frederick took me around to see the locality i lived in one house bordering on dikrulwaro and salmona and the other house purely in dikrulwaro i think am i right but uh, let us say arani the full thing arani but just to tell you where i stayed i stayed in a house now it's under repairs it's it's covered up and it's undergoing repairs tall pillars and all in front just on the turn leading to that small bridge sanko and be uh, at, at, and behind that was one of my closest friends and classmate blandina mr de souza another very dear classmate is here present idalin fernandes and if i am to look at this group and think about that particular period of time how many people i met today who belong to that there are only these two one my teacher shirley i bow my head down to you miss shirley and the other is idali the locality i lived in was very lively i was a serious person i had not yet got out of my shell but that first house in front of blandina vibrated at the back at the back of my house with a full of music blandina's mother playing the piano cedric playing the accordion and slowly and steadily i i became not just you know just my classmate in 9th 10th and 11th close friends i spent some days in that majestic house really that family that family of blandina her mother cedric steven played such a tremendous role on my life i would not have got out of my culture shock if it were not to them i owe it so much to them it's another family that i owe much to not not uh, it leading to arari just on the turn the other turn the other turn coming down uh this um, seminary road the former adult saldana's house that old house also was they were related to me they were related i'm not going to get into the relation fourth cousin fifth cousin what but they were they were there like another anchor an anchor in my life they were also musical uh, 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 anita on the piano george on the guitar anna saldana on the on the mandolin and ida saldana on the bass between blandina's house and and this house most of my evenings i had spent in the first year 
out of the three years. First year, most of my evenings in these two houses. Actually, I'm a quiet person. I don't go to people's homes, even today. I like to lead a very private life. But these two families, I'm talking only of locality, please. Huh? These two families drew me completely without. Slowly, I got acquainted to other to other areas of Saligaon, whether Dimelo Vado, maybe Padmadap, the shop, Padmadap, Sundays, St. Catherine Chaplain, mind the George was too far for me. Majestic, sparkling white, a great church in Goa, but too far for me. And maybe I was not too spiritual. Maybe. Till today, I'm not very spiritual. Half-hearted, lukewarm, you could call it. So this was one image, one factor that played such an important role in the life of a girl who was 13 or 14 years old without any siblings. Returning back from uh, Karachi, which was then the capital of of Pakistan, and we run down Pakistan like anything, but Goa, the whole of Goa, when I came, actually looked to me like one village, with cameos and everything. So, so, but, there was another, and uh, another uh, thing, another place, and that is the reason why we have all your three years. And that is my school. The teacher is here, my classmate here, classmate for three years here. School, <laughs> Ruth's convent at that time didn't have the second floor. Very, we are very proud, that batch, our batch is very proud to have arranged fairs and lots of activities for that second floor. Very proud of it. But all that happened after I left Saligaon. The school, why my St. Joseph's convent in Karachi was a high, high level school. We, where even Benazir Bhutto also studied for a year or so. St. Patrick's on one side of St. Uh, Patrick's Church, Cathedral and St. Joseph's was on the other. Both very elite schools. At that time, my father was getting just 100 rupees in 1962, 100 rupees salary, but fee structure, and I was in the C structure, 25 rupees per month. Always school education in St. Joseph's and in Lourdes Convent was full day school, full day. So I really don't know as a former director what is the fuss of, of a full day system. When I have always been a product of full day school. The school, while St. Joseph's, St. Joseph's of Karachi gave me all the skills, Language skills, whether reading, writing, whatever I am today, those skills are from there. Skills of mathematics, science, and all this, because for English, for instance, as a Cambridge student, I studied, as you like it, in the seventh standard. Can you believe having as you like it today in, in Goa, if you, to have the play, to study the play, as you like it in seventh standard into, in Goa today? Impossible. So with those skills, I got a lot of skills over there, years and years over there. Skills. Very proud of that school. But it is the three years in Saligang which gave me confidence. It, 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 it's the confidence that I built was in Lutz Convent, Convent School, a village school. I'm very proud that whatever I am today is 
partially due to a village school, partially and largely due to a village school. What is it that built my confidence over there? My classmates, Nadina and Angela, Doyle and Bella D'Souza. If Idalin will remember, they were tomboys, and Adrian were tomboys. You, you, we, they, I, I'm 100% sure, Sister, uh, Miss Shirley will, I don't mean, really disagree with me. We, uh, Sister Veronica said that ours was the naughtiest batch at that point of time. I think she used to say it for everyone because she was quite a, she was quite a soft person herself. But I, I'm sure we were the naughtiest. Why, I'll tell you. I became a teacher later on for 22 years. Very often I used to think, will I be play, play, play the same pranks that we played on our teachers? I'll give you my pers personal... Either will agree or disagree, it doesn't remember, I don't know. We had a maths teacher in the SSC. Even before that, there was Cur Curia Course and George Kuti, who passed away very recently. We had Miss Blossom, Miss Pinto, and so, so many others. And Sister Veronica was the best of the lot. Taught us French and civics and administration. Best of the lot. Now let's be. Keep, you can keep it here. Don't worry. I, cold also, I can drink. The, the issue was that how naughty we were, I will give you the example when you tell me then. Because I, have, as a teacher for 22 years, I have never faced this, how naughty we were. We used, we, they used to link students with the teachers, you know this? Did you have like that? Openly tease them. Teachers knew and the students also knew. It was so embarrassing. For instance, I was linked with Gajanan Pernikar, my maths teacher. And to my further embarrassment, long after I left, he became my director of education. <laughs> first, first, when I joined the directory, he was two levels below me. Then, with the help of the Supreme Court, and he had some benefits, he, he rose, he got three promotions on the same day and two levels above me. So, you just imagine, I doubt, uh, uh, if openly Angela Bella openly would link the stu certain students with the teachers, openly in front of them. With, with, uh, naughtiness was not with, uh, without malice. Mischievousness was without maliciousness. And that was one thing that played such an important role in my life. We had the mock parliament. I don't know if it still prevails. Mock parliament. In the first year, I was a minister of... Uh, a discipline, a 10 paisa fine for those who didn't use their proper uh, uniform, if they uh, were late, if they were caught, 10 paisa fine, if they were caught uh, talking in uh, any other language other than English. There was what, uh, I don't know if this still prevails, first bell was freeze bell. Free. If you didn't freeze, who were, you were caught, you paid 10 paisa fine. A lot of money in those days. <laughs> the second bell unfreeze and a walk to form your lines and the rays of the sun in front of the school. That the, still, they must be standing in that way. I can never, I have never seen it. So many schools I have visited at a time of assembly. So many schools, I, as an inspector, I have gone from beginning to end, aided as well as, uh, unaided as well as government schools, but none of this. And then the second year, I became education minister. Means my party won, and so I, uh, I became education minister. And in the third year, my party lost. I can't even remember also the name of my party, and I became speaker. 
I who was so quiet like a rat, I became the speaker and I, the prime minister used to prompt me. Bella D'Souza was the prime minister. She used to prompt me as to what I should do. And, I, and definitely the words in the parliament were point of order for silence. I remember that the reports were given by Sister Veronica at the end of the term, right from the stage, upstage. The reports were given, and especially the first, first, second, and third had to go up. I remember the so many operas or operators that we performed on the same stage. On the same stage. I never participated in all these things in St. Joseph's, the very elite St. Joseph's, but yet I, it has given me the base it, that I can, cannot deny. What I'm trying to tell you is that how much the school formed the Celsa Pinto of today. What role it played in the formation of Celsa Pinto of today. There is one thing I forgot to actually these are the two. One point that struck me was also the 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 what should I say the tough relationship between the returning expat and the local Goan. Which for those of us who came from elsewhere or, or moved into the village from another village, there is that creative tension where you're not accepted quite fully, you know, because you're seen as the unusual, as the odd person out. And uh, that's for you. And, and the villager also gets a culture shock from you because you're behaving so strangely. You're not behaving in keeping with uh, how, 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 how a girl should behave, how a boy should behave, and whatever it is. Any questions? Any questions and reactions? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, no? Yeah, no, but then you said you've shifted to Porvari? After you shifted, okay. But my mother used to walk from Saligaon to Porvari to once a, one, once a month. Right, right, yeah. In the 60s, 70s, uh, after that, your mother was coming from Porvari. Never uh, came, no, no, no. I never came to uh, Saligaon. So yeah. 68. April 68. Lutz Convent. I was staying in Saligaon. Saligaon. After 68 was Porvari. You might have not known at that time. There was a, there was a system that, see, uh, we, are not from, we were not from Saligaon, and neither we were we hear it. I, uh, you might be aware that India, Pakistan, uh, we, are, uh, we are enemy countries. So you're not allowed to bring your savings at all. So we returned back as paupers. We returned back as paupers. So, and even I did my, uh, uh, all my studies, um, uh, uh, at that time we used to pay fees, I'm sure. Seven rupees, seven rupees or five rupees. We used to rupees. pay fees, but in college I could not afford. In fact, I was going to be converted into a clerk until I got an economically backward class scholarship. EBC. Yeah, EBC scholarship. So the issue was that we, at that time, they, it seemed that if houses were not given, some houses were empty, they were not given out on rent. But what was the system? You, you can look, you can live in my house, but you have to look after my house and return it perfectly. You do the, uh, the painting, whitewashing once a year and keep it in perfect condition and return it when I want it. Yeah. That's all, both the houses like that. And so also in Purvari when we went. All three houses. It's only when we, 40 years back, we uh, uh, came to uh, Panjim. Last 40 years I'm in Panjim. Only from then onwards we, we, are, we are paying rent. And still, I'm still, I, did, oh, I own a flat in apartment in Purvari, but I am still, uh, you know, uh, as a tenant in, in, in uh, you know, in Panjim. See, when you get attached to a place, you, even if you own that place, it's insigni insignificant. What you are attached to, you may, it may not be yours, but, and you are paying rent, 
but that becomes very significant for me at the moment. The area in which I live, spontaneous, the neighbors and all, yeah, 40 years of my life there. That's how it is. That's how you get attached to it. Your three years even was enough for, for a few families to be attached to a few families. And then there was a school where you had uh, Idaline and Blandina and Bella coming from Arpara and, uh, and many others were there. And Angela Doyle, your uh, first cousin, Angela Doyle, she even touched me. You're aware of, we have a WhatsApp uh, group of class of 68, that is the batch. Yeah. You spoke in length about education because you are in education. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah. You know, there are uh, teachers whose ego and pride you know, gets disturbed when a student expresses herself, himself, when they are a little, um, you know, assertive, when they have a difference of opinion, or even today through Google, they get the latest and they correct the teacher. Yeah, so what would you do? I'm running a school in Bombay. What would advice would you give to the teachers? Those were the times when it was one-sided. Today is not at times, but you must also know to draw the line. The students should also know to draw the line. The teachers should also know to draw the line. Interactive sessions are always good, but if you're going to, a teacher will be able to uh, uh, decipher whether you are actually testing the person or not. That's not fair for a student. You know, you know. Of course, the teacher is wrong. Suppose you're saying the teacher is wrong. I have had students who, who, who tried to behave in that way. Teacher's wrong, wrong, except that it is wrong. Your teacher doesn't know, say, yes, I do not know, tomorrow I will tell you. I'm not, a teacher is not expected to be a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, they run down the, student. the student's uh, self-esteem gets disturbed. No, and they, that, no, no, that can influence their life. It can, you see, it can be a two-way thing, I can tell you. Students can also disturb the self-esteem of the teacher. And a teacher can also disturb the self-esteem of a student. So both should know where to draw the line. The student is young. Father, you father, know, but, but, some but some it's, a, it's a very thin day. dividing line. Because see what Dr. Selsa was saying in our time, we all of us grew up with strict parents. I, I can write a full book on the strictness in our Jesuit schools. And, and I don't uh, criticize them for that. I understand the, the reason why they did it and the motives why they did it and above all only the right persons got caught like you know goody goody guys like me never got caught so I have nothing to complain but but you know it's a thin dividing line sometimes the students were so See, naughty suppose, sometimes suppose the teacher has explained a particular topic at then at the stage in between the student should not disturb the teacher unless the teacher asks questions and if the student knows a little more than the teacher teacher can I say something about it there's a way also yeah yeah, so the, and the teacher should uh, allow the student to say it. Yes, yes, I didn't know it, and oh yes, I remember. I, 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 I didn't say it, but now I remember having read it somewhere. So because times have changed, and this kind of attitude maybe even in the family, the, the your own children can question the parents. So this kind of attitude it's changing. I don't say to use the rod. No, 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 no. I am not advocating the rod, but discipline is wanted, no, drawing the line somewhere. The attitudes have changed a lot in the last few years. I don't know how we cope with it. We are from that generation where people believed in strictness. Today's generation is the other extreme, which, which has some, it's a different mindset. I remember how parents were shocked with our generation. No, no, I believe we generation. have to be friends. I believe that today the parents have to be friends. but. Still, uh, friends means they, they should, uh, uh, somebody is the boss, no. At least one level above, you must recognize there is what they are known as elders after all, no. Is there such a word in the dictionary, elder? Is there such a word as a dictionary as a parent? They can, you are parent only because of blood relationship or parent because there is a, a little bit of age gap. Do you don't need to, but doctor, you know? It's yeah? more than that. It's more than yeah. that. See, because in our time, we were scared of our parents because of the age. Whether they knew more than us, whether they were, you know, qualified or not. We respected the age. Whereas today, it's the other extreme, isn't it? But the, the respect is not there. 
the, the attitude is very different. So I don't know. Unfortunately, the issue is like this: that maybe the parent is more afraid. We were afraid. We were afraid of our parents, and our parents yeah, are yeah. afraid of the students. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, yeah. She's of a teacher's perspective. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'll go back to the time that you spoke yes. about the sixties and the seventies, and um, the interesting thing about what you said: your holidays were very interesting. Um, when we came to Saligaon from Lothali, my dad's from Lothali. We came to Saligaon because mum's from Saligaon. the doyle family and the masculinities and the pintos uh, so when we came to saligaon we had the same you were pointing out the the problem of sashtikars coming to saligaon but my mother was a salgaonkar who married a sashtikar and when she went to lothali um, the problem was with konkani so when we came back we spoke a sashti konkani and it was literally beaten out of us when we went to school they used to laugh at us make fun of us whenever we'd speak in the sashti konkani so very successfully it was completely annihilated and we started to speak the konkani of the the local konkani uh, but interestingly uh, you s- we seem to have the same kind of the childhood the george and the and the anita and all of them i was much younger uh, when they used to come on their summer holidays and so music came into saligaon this area they were really the pushers of of the musical uh, you know uh, evenings and the beach what is interesting is you went to the beach and played games we did the same in the 70s So it did not die out. The going up on the hill for berries and coming home. So yeah, even leaving. Even the games were the same. The games. The games the same. Yeah, the games were the same. So, so we we lived uh, right on the on the road. My grandmother's house is where she would call from the kitchen and say, "Rowdy, rowdy," and the bus would stop. You know, the bus would literally stop for her. If she had forgotten a bag, she would tell him, "Wait, wait, wait! I'll go get my shopping bag." And he would wait, and she'd hop into the bus. She would tell us, "Leave your slippers behind if you're going to the beach." So we would literally go to the beach without slippers on, walk back. Yes, so walk. very interesting yeah. that in the '60s yeah. and '70s and even early '80s, no, Rico? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, still yeah. cycled and walked yeah. and. Um, We walked, but but, but they we were walked. too crowded. They were yeah. too crowded. And my dad was so liberal that although we were small kids, doctor. he would stop he would stop at lorry's bar and he would have a small forerunner's worth and he said you want a sip you he would give us a sip also i came to know through heather de souza i came to know through heather de souza our classmate who used to stay next to the cordero's house that they used to walk to the beach but yeah. we never walked See, you know, i i suppose the yeah. reason why we never walked is my because my mother was very protective like that you go in a group in the bus you are safer that way she ma that car doctor just to add to alice's yeah. point uh, this point of be goans being an exclusivist society they will exclude you see this is something which is never discussed but they will exclude you on any excuse however much of an insider you are you will still be an outsider in your case it was language the shastri dialect okay if you no 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 see it may not be mean but 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 you know it is quite unforgiving in that sense they will laugh at you if you don't know the language they laugh at you if you speak it with a different language they laugh at you such a lot of fast speaking and the bangladesh class basically i mean it's the joke of the day we recently set up a sashti kokni group and when we set it up the guy said you all all bangladesh class what are you all doing here you all have come here to make fun of us that's what they initially thought but we were doing it purely from a you know linguistic point of view to understand it now it's going on well and there were three or four guys who actually they they were almost crying when they said we we studied in bades and people were laughing at our accents i'll tell you something very strange about a konkani <laughs> because see for some reason see each have their own way of thinking and probably my mother never knew a word called linguist there you can know many languages no kon- for me or oh, others no you will not speak in konkani you will not speak in portuguese the languages that they spoke only in english so what happened when i came to goa you know i didn't know konkani at all i didn't know konkani at all and uh, one day uh, somebody asked me here in saligaon uh, in in the arari area only what's the time so i said sari roll <laughs> so 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 it's like that this is unforgivable no <laughs> No, I went to a shopkeeper and said, "Kitle ang dita ge?" So she said, "Dead shi rupee ang." I said, "Ode shi dita." I said, "She must have this guy is nuts." Like yeah. she's offering it to me for one fifty. I'm saying, "Will you give it to me for two fifty?" Like so. Or like when my husband came, he also Bombay wala coming to Goa. He complained to somebody that his wife actually meant to say, "Your cow came over in your garden." 
he was a chop and he had a ball. So he went in so angry, he said, Tuji, buy a lunch and 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 buy a lunch. No, but but one strong, thing, but but also the that. returning expat has to recognize, you know, that there is a strong code within Goan society, and until you understand that code, you no, know, if the moment you break that code, people get they they freak out, they absolutely freak out, you know. So the code could be something as simple as a patriarchal code, like you know, the husband is supposed to behave in a certain wife way, the wife is supposed to behave in a certain way. You, no, in in. See, Goa, you have the extra problem where it looks like a liberal society, but it is conservative inside. That's my argument. Uh, uh, what do you think so? What you are saying? Uh, I feel you know, that that is human nature, you know, with any, any community, any this thing. Language and identity and traditions no, are very... No, uh, it's basically... Be no, if a person is alone, he or she wants a friend. If there's a third friend... Then the question becomes, okay, we, we two are closer than uh, the third one for some reason. Whether it be religion, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, and it goes on even, uh, you know, in adult life. Okay, we are engineers, uh, she's a doctor, <laughs> you know, uh, like that. Somehow that's human nature, I feel. You know? I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example on language. Uh, Mr. Shah will stand up for me, maybe. You try to speak German and you see the response you get. You speak two sentences well in German or Portuguese, mm -hmm. you will get a red carpet rolled out for you. Try the same thing in French and you see. You speak French, you may have studied French for five years, mm -hmm. but because you can't pronounce it well, you they will not accept you. You mean the French will not? So same thing happens in Konkani. Konkani is one of those non-accepting languages. Not only Konkani, Portuguese also. You have to speak perfect Portuguese. But the one thing is unique about Saligautas, yes seen other waters. Nothing. Some in Sali. And another thing maybe, uh, see, uh, uh, see, uh, I, uh, I don't, as an outsider, I do not know the inner stories of uh, this, but I, I found that more or less I was uh, accepted even at that time as a child across the table, number one. I had, if I can remember, is a face that I enjoyed for a quiet person. I have enjoyed. I, I think uh, uh, Saligao is a place of uh, very great, uh, has contributed, has made a lot of contributions, have very great people, very great people, still continue to have very great people. One of them is your, maybe I, I don't know you all so well, but some, some great people are around. Then I, I forgot to tell you, Salmona uh, Fountain was a part of my uh, life in such a way, not only in the months of April and May on Sunday, but even every Sunday, every Sunday. Because I was, we used to walk up there and I was very disappointed to see the Sal, Sal, uh, Salmona Spring of today. How it is done up like that and all, maybe uh, uh, that is not the way in which we used to have bath. That is not the way we should have bought. We fought a lot to preserve it, but people don't see that as a development at all. They don't see it as development. They wanted this is development, the concreting and the bathrooms and the taps and all this development. So we are looked at. Yeah, but that is looked at by the local people as. Development. I know that old days of sitting under the pipe is old fashioned. Old fashioned. Old fashioned. It's not development. Yeah, yeah, they see that as development. Who will go there and how many people from Saligao themselves? No, but they don't need to. They see the tourists coming there and the tourists are staying in places. So they see it as development. They see that. The economics of it. Uh, is Doctor, for if them I may just add, if I may just add, yeah. uh, to, to add to Father's question, I think you know, actually every village is unique in its own way. Uh, but what makes different, uh, what makes Saligao a bit different for me is that it has a lot of these social capital building ventures. And not just in our time, but uh, say this club is 93 years old. You can imagine the kind of money, energy, foresight that went, thanks to these guys and the others, that went into setting up this institution then and bequeathing it to society. You know, this is one thing. There is a fountain. Sorry? No, see, see, that time it was a Christian society, but we are all converts. So 
I don't know when it started, but a lot of people went out into migration, like doctor said, because of the English schools here. And then they decided to put back some money into this social capital building thing. Whatever their religion, I'm sure every, every society has their own forms of philanthropy and all that. Uh, Pratik, I have a question to ask you because you may no, be no. fully aware of all the works written on Saligaon. Is there scope? for more study of the village of Saligaon. There is always scope because what I'm saying, I, every story I, is a different voice. I would say more contemporary uh, study. Co contemporary, contemporary only. Contemporary. As I was saying, when we speak, sit here in this institution and speak of Saligaon, we're speaking of a certain section, middle and upper class, for instance. We are talking about the Catholic community. We are talking about, so it, sometimes it can get, be quite elitist. We are really not going down to the lower levels and saying, how did people in Saligaon live? In fact, that part of the community lived uh, un, in subjugation. If you look at Saligaon, you look at every family. It, no, 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 if you no, look no, at no, the, no, no. See, I will disagree with you. See, we are apologetic. We are apologetic for our class roots. For our class roots, which is a fact, which is a fact, but, but. If you, two things, two things I would like, you can disagree with me, two things I would like to add here. One is that a lot of Saligaon is middle class, has been for a long time, point number one. Point number two, very briefly, there is a lot of upward mobility within the village. You see the poorer kids need not be poor after one generation. That's my belief. There are a lot left out. See where... You know where that is coming from? You know where that is coming from? According to me, that's coming from waves of migration. So, so the, the recent settlers feel a bit disadvantaged. It is. It is. Father, please. Say. Look at my own house. We lived, we were the, the ones who came. My mother was born in Bihar. So her family came from Bihar. My grandfather was in the railway. So they had their pension and whatever. They had, you know, money enough to come. My grand great grandmother used to take a gold coin to go buy fish in the market. So they were at that level. And who lived in our outhouse? With the people who are now developing. It took them a long time to come to this level. And we did not do very much. There I don't was, think we did much. Dangerous situation today. My mother used to say when they were growing, even when between when she used to come, there was a lot of uh, you know understanding between the Catholics and the other faith communities. In fact, they would come for our funerals whenever uh, Mother Mary's statue would be brought in. Seeing so many Hindus would come the whole day uh, with the present government, which is very, very dangerous in dividing the country. Uh, I realized that Saligao and the rest of Goa is in dangerous situation. You know, and we seem to be keeping quiet and allowing it to happen. And a statement by the, by the chief minister that we will rebuild the temples uh, done by broken by the Portuguese was was hardly yeah. How can you say that? Yeah. No, no. I mentioned this in I mentioned this in Bombay. I mean, you know, in my church groups and all. I said prior to 1947, prior to the United Nations, the the attitude was might is right. That means if I have conquered this place, I can do anything. That was the law. After the United Nations and after we got our republic, then on any injustice done can be questioned by the courts. But but but, but you can't question anything. But I want to add one thing. I want, it might might seem like a conservative point of view, but uh, the fact of the matter is that you know a lot of these divisions you can see them as half full or half empty glass. Now take a look at the premier school in the village, Luth Convent. Okay. Today it is much of a mixed school, but people from all religious groups, all, all, all racial groups, all ethnic groups coming and having equal share of it. In our time it was, it was a Catholic school. So, so, so no, no, so I'm saying it's a good thing. I'm saying, I'm saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's a good thing that, so, so, so there are mixing happening now, now, now. If I'm a politician and if I want to divide, I will go on the basis of class, of, of class, of caste, of geography. You know, the upside versus the downside of migration. So don't tell me that, you know, I cannot find something else to divide. However much you... See, the onus is on us to make society inclusive. But if, if a politician wants to divide, he or she will find ways to divide. That's all I'm saying. However much you try. Now, now for example, uh, even this, this full fight between, you know, what I jokingly call South Saligam and North Saligam, okay? Yeah. Wilfred D'Souza... No, no, I just jokingly call it. Wilfred D'Souza in, in, in the 90s he realized that there was, you know, it, it benefited his vote bank 
so he took on those guys to support him and finished off and you know finished off this dance and then he started a dance there and both the dancers died out after some time i mean god bless his soul i'm not i'm not against him or anything like that but this is what a politician would normally do so you know it happens it happens how do we cope with it that's a challenge so so and, and it's it's also based on migration because the people from this side of the village have been in the village for longer and have got more money because of the africa migration they've gone more into africa english education and that creates a bit of a bit of a a rift a rift so how do you how do you how do you gap this bridge how do you bridge this gap you know you, you felt in school there was a superior inferior thing what she's talking i felt a superior inferior thing as far as girls and boys were concerned okay as far as as far as girls she doesn't want me to talk as far as girls and boys were concerned we could at the most because of majority were that generation most of those in those comments were from a black it was changing in our time doctor uh, i was supposedly bright but the best i could stand, hope to get was the fourth rank if i got fourth i was bloody lucky before that all three girls quota because they were better than us they were better than us and uh, yeah. sorry no so you're talking about gaps there are all kinds of gaps why 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 st vincent school ne Thanks. Thanks, father. He's a yeah, he's a priest from Bombay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mister. For the Anthony Fernandez. Which and, parish? Uh, Saint Teresa's parish. If you come to Bombay, Girigaon. Girigaon. Father is from Girigaon. He is from originally from Saligaon. Mister Bijan Shah. Before you go, just a round of a round of introductions. Which family? Fernandez. My both my dad and mom are from here. Father, father, father. Mister, two minutes. Introductions. introductions you know you know herman's house father you know herman herman in the lane yeah just front of it there's a yellow bungalow there that's it yeah no no this, this side this side on the side across the across side across and then that's the last one and then the side is sikkar no sikkar at that sikkar i'm also at the moment i'm um, the clisil uh, i'm the secretary of the ccbi uh, lady commission so i do a lot of traveling in india very nice where the president archbishop is the ccbi president the president very nice so i've seen the reality in other parts in the contribution of the church towards education the church in north india is very safe as because we give the best of education i was in lucknow for a only week only to the elites no 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 that even not now even uh, akilesh yadav and all these people all over all they study Dices. in a christian school so, I, 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 hey. okay okay that's Dices. a different debate but but mr shah just just a small round of introduction mr bijan shah uh, uh, i am a retired engineer Without and i know frederick i know frederick from 20th century uh, <laughs> and he was also an active member of the linux users group and i am a linux user still now i am using linux only i don't use any other operating system and he is also like me he's an engineer from the bengal engineering college the famous bengal engineer thanks for coming thank you yeah there are there are there are interjections i'll hold okay anyway uh, yeah i am i am jarad de melo i grew up in pune so i'm from saligaon arari but i grew up in pune oh yeah another jarad and i know him yeah this is not a popular piece yes on time come come jarad yeah and uh, you know dr selsa dr selsa i i could i could identify uh, with your uh, thing because i also came from uh, pune in 73 and for me also it was a cultural shock you know like uh, it was not only karachi but even places like pune had electricity 24 hours and all you know no i'm just uh, sharing not uh, this thing of course not piped gas and all in pune but uh, 24 hours electricity and then i came and uh, i ponties. yeah ponties and this, and i was in the engineering college at farmagudi so the first year i didn't get hostel accommodation so i stayed in a room without electricity for the one whole year oh gosh you know and managed somehow you know 
so it was quite a, a change like that. But now a lot of improvement has come, taken place in uh, Goa. And talking also about this development issue, you know, I found, you know, not only, um, I find even our own people who are, let's say, in Canada and all, hmm. when they come initially, they say, there's not much development, it's still the same, you know. Yeah. So everyone looks at buildings, concrete as development. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's completely gone. Yeah. So, so I, I was a Barnetto and I married into a De Cruz family. Uh, Sebi De Cruz, you know Uncle Sebi? Say Dean how, De Cruz straight away. Yeah. No, no, no. How, Dean De Cruz didn't fall from the sky. His great grandfather is Wolfangos, Wolfang De Cruz. So my husband's grandfather's house this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Wolfang De Cruz. No, no. We live in, in the reli the house which is behind the, the figurators, the, not figurators, what was your... Uh, uh, behind Oldegors, behind the Saldana house, which is the figurator house, which is a huge house which had six daughters apparently. And then they all left, so the house was left in ruin and my father now bought it. So we've been living there for the last 34 years. The, the previous owner of the house was the family of uh, Dr. Errol D'Souza, who is the... Uh, who is the yeah. director of uh, I am Ahmedabad. I am Ahmedabad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.